Hey everybody, it's Jeff back with our weekly installment of Silver and Gold Market Update. If you haven't watched these yet, I want to provide a weekly track record of the physical premiums, the paper markets, the hedge funds. So if you're stacking gold and silver, you could spot opportunities to both buy and sell. So let's jump right into it. Key factors affecting the metals this week. Uh, it was a short week. We didn't have trade on Friday, uh, being that it was Good Friday. Uh, but gold paper uh, bounced right at a key level. That was a huge sign and funds are still not selling gold anymore. So, I mean, that, that's a big sign too. And more interestingly, silver premiums actually inched up, which reverse trend. Uh, they've been slowly inching down as I think people are kind of getting sick of paying huge premiums. But the fact is they inched up and I've been at some local coin shows and there's still an absolutely incredible amount of demand for physical silver. Uh, even at these high premiums, so these coin shows are, are selling out. And uh, even with COVID restrictions and all that, I mean, they're packing them in there. So you could tell that the demand for rare coins, for silver, for gold is still strong. And more interestingly, Bitcoin has always been a thorn in the side of gold paper. Uh, Bitcoin obviously had rallied substantially over the last five to six months. And that took a lot of the steam out of gold. Uh, as Bitcoin, of course, is known as the new digital gold or, or whatever they call it. But as long as that's not going straight up, uh, maybe some people might be seeing gold as a cheaper alternative right now. Looking at the silver week over week, uh, it was a pretty quiet in terms of paper prices. Uh, we did try to trade lower uh, middle of the week and, and found a little bit of support. But overall, we've only inched up about four cents and the funds are still selling, although not aggressively so. But as I mentioned earlier, that premium did inch up to $10, which is a full dollar higher than where we were just two weeks ago on AppMax. And the most important note is JM Bullion, which is normally cheaper than AppMax, now is selling their one ounce Silver Eagles for $10.50 over. At one point, they were almost $1.50 to $2 cheaper than AppMax, and now they're actually more expensive. Uh, which is somewhat astonishing given uh, whenever I follow these, JM Bullion is almost always the cheaper of the two. So uh, certainly the paper markets, or I'm sorry, the physical markets are showing some support here. Looking at the charts, um, they did break that key $25 level and we are still a little bit below it, but it's trying to find support. The charts are honestly not great. Uh, they're just tired, most likely range bound here with a general weakness. Um, funds aren't interested in buying anymore and funds are the main ones that drive the paper price. So even though you're stacking silver, of course, if you want to buy cheaper, you want this to go down. Um, but it almost seems like maybe now as paper is going down, premiums might inch back up to keep uh, the physical around the same level. Looking at the dollars, this is another thorn in the side over the last uh, month or so. As you can see, it's been trending higher. A lot of people wonder why the dollar is going up, uh, even though we're continue to print money. And the dollar index is, is a huge part against the euro. And as long as U.S. interest rates go up relative to the world, money will flock to the U.S. And we have been seeing higher interest rates, especially when you compare ourselves to the near zero interest rates on other parts of the world, in Japan and parts of Europe. Uh, in Germany, I know, is negative interest rates, I think. Uh, so money is flocking to the U.S. And, and pushing this dollar a little bit higher. So I, I don't think it necessarily continues. I think maybe we chop around a little bit, which hopefully could provide some support for the paper markets and gold and silver. So sum it up, honestly, I'm fairly neutral at this point. Uh, the charts are a little damaged, um, but the physical market premiums, I think, are extremely interesting. So hopefully that is a bullish sign here. Looking at gold week over week, <laughs> again, it was unchanged, but I'll get to the chart next. We found support at an extremely key level, which is actually quite bullish from a uh, spec trader perspective. And, and that's why I do full time. And so not only do we find support, if we could trade above some key levels, which I'll talk about in a second, that could be a very bullish sign for gold paper. And the premiums have remained essentially constant for the last four weeks and funds were roughly unchanged on their position. Talking about the uh, support level, you could see that 1673, we traded down hard, I think it was on Tuesday, maybe it was Monday, uh, and found support and then traded abruptly higher and back above 1700. 
and I know we're closer to 1740 right now. If we could somehow trade above 1763, which was the old support level that we broke down below, uh, that would be extremely bullish. And, and as a professional speculative trader, that would be a buy sign for sure on the on the paper side. And I can imagine the hedge funds would see it that way as well. So 1763 will be a key level. Uh, it was fantastic that we found support down 1673. Uh, we just need to break above those levels to see maybe a rally uh, come back into the market. So kind of breaking it down and the physical market premiums are neutral. They're not bearish because they're not going down. They're still strong and a lot of things are still sold out. Hedge fund positions are bullish from my point of view because they are slowly accumulating longs here. The dollar index, uh, it's kind of neutral at the moment and the charts are definitely bullish. So I'm certainly leaning towards the bullish point of view on gold and more neutral on silver. So that's all I have. Thanks for watching. Take care.